what do we have here? Broken door, looks like forced entry. Footprints on the wood floor. Culprit was definitely wearing some dirty boots and crumbs, crumbs literally everywhere. The intruder stole a whole lot of cookies. It's not gonna be an easy case to solve. I think, I think we need Professor Kelly Knight on this one. And scene. <laughs> Y'all like my acting skills? I always wanted to play a detective in a movie and I actually got the opportunity because outside of being a science communicator with my hip hop science platform that helps spark curiosity in STEM to people all across the globe by merging the worlds of entertainment and science, I also have experience as an actor and played a detective in a short film, but this this isn't about me. This is about all of you because this Spark of STEM Coffee Break series is an online series designed to inspire educators with innovative STEM tips, tools, and resources you can use in the classroom or even at home. And today's lesson will not disappoint because as I mentioned in the beginning, our opening mystery is a job for the one and only Professor Kelly Knight. She's going to show you how you can bring a real-world forensic science lab into your classroom or at home with some really simple hands-on activities. I'm pretty hyped for this one, and I'm sure all of you are too. So, Professor Kelly Knight, let's talk some forensics. All right. Thank you so much, Maynard, for that introduction. My name is Professor Kelly Knight. I am coming to you live from my forensic DNA laboratory at George Mason University. And I am excited to take you all into the fascinating, exciting, wonderful, amazing world of forensic DNA analysis. So I'm gonna tell you all a couple of ideas of how you can bring forensic DNA into your classroom. So let's get started. So the first thing I'll say is this activity can be done as a standalone if you just wanna feature forensic DNA, or you can go back and watch my previous Spark of STEM video where I talk about how to create a mock crime scene in your classroom. So this can be done as a follow-up analysis step to your mock crime scene. Uh, if you have any type of forensic DNA evidence that you included in your mock crime scene, you can do this DNA activity as an analysis step. So in that mock crime scene activity, um, there's different ways that you can introduce forensic DNA. Um, you could have maybe a Band-Aid with synthetic blood on it, or you can have, I like to use paper towels stained with a little bit of synthetic blood. Um, so there's different ways you can introduce this. Um, so after you have your students work with your crime scene or work with their starting evidence, um, the first thing you're gonna do is teach them a little bit about what we do after we get the forensic DNA uh, into the laboratory. And so the first step, of course, begins with the crime scene. And so you want your students to first properly collect and package their forensic DNA evidence. And so that means that it needs to be in paper packaging, needs to be properly sealed. And again, you can start either with the mock crime scene or you can actually just hand them their DNA evidence already prepackaged, right? And so there's two different types of tests that I like to do as a follow-up to DNA evidence collection. I like to use either the phenophthalein kits or I like to use hemostics. So if you are not afraid of getting a little messy, this only has three chemicals that you really use uh, that come in squeezy bottles. This is a very easy kit to use. Or if you don't really wanna to fool too much with chemicals, these are really easy to use as well. So these Hema sticks look just like this. So it's just a simple little stick with a chemical pad at the end that is gonna be used for your reaction. So I'll just start with this. So this is a known blood stain control that actually comes in this phenethylene kit. Uh, it's just dog blood. But my suggestion working with K-12 students is to use synthetic blood because you get the same color change with your reactions minus all of the biohazard. So synthetic blood can be purchased in bulk um, online. Um, it's very easy to purchase and it will work well with any of these chemical tests. So let's say we have our, our DNA evidence here 
and your students are ready to start their activity. So they've opened up their evidence package either because they've collected it from the crime scene or because you've just handed them an evidence package and you're gonna do the test with them, okay? So obviously before this, you wanna um, talk to them a little bit about forensic DNA and you wanna explain to them uh, what these presumptive tests do and why we do them, right? So as I'm swabbing this, I'll just tell you, so one of the reasons why we like to do presumptive tests is because when you go to a crime scene and you see things that are red, brown, right? It's not always blood. Could be hot sauce, could be ketchup, it could be barbecue sauce. And no one wants to spend thousands of dollars doing DNA testing on barbecue sauce, right? And so it's important for us as DNA analysts to know beforehand whether or not the presence of blood is indicated. Now, the tests that we're doing today are just presumptive tests, meaning that they don't definitively confirm the presence of blood. They're presumptive, meaning if we get a positive result, it indicates the presence of blood, but it could be something else because these tests are very prone to false positives. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just taking a swab and I'm just kind of rubbing onto this blood stain control. Now, if you have your forensic DNA evidence there, let's say you have synthetic blood on a Band-Aid, you can tell your students to do the same. These cotton swabs actually come in these venethaline kits and you would tell them to just take a swab and rub really briskly on the Band-Aid, just enough so that you can see a little bit of color change. So you can see, you probably can't see too much color change on there, but it doesn't take a lot because these tests are really sensitive, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add these three reagents. So the first one you're gonna add is alcohol. So these bottles are uh, labeled. I also sometimes like to number them just to make it easier for the students, but I'm gonna add a little bit of alcohol. The next is phenethylene or the Castle-Meyer reagent. So you're gonna add a little bit of that. Then you're gonna add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. And as you can see, we're getting some nice CSI-like color change there. So it's turning pink. So at this point, we have a positive result and this indicates the presence of blood, okay? So that's one example of a presumptive test. The other one you could do, as I mentioned, is using these hema sticks or Ciro sticks. Several different brands make them, um, but they're very easy to use. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swab that little blood stain control again, okay? And then I'm going to just add, there's a, just, I have just some distilled water. I'm just gonna add just a little bit of distilled water to my swab. Okay, so I have just a tiny bit of color on there. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this stick and you can see right now it's yellow, okay? So all you have to do is press it onto this swab or onto this stick, I'm sorry. And you can see just that fast, it's already changed colors. So this again is a positive result. So this um, now shows that we have indicated the presence of blood, okay? So that's the second part of this activity. So you've started with your DNA evidence. You've talked to them a little bit about presumptive tests and why we do them. You can also talk a little bit about where does DNA come from? Um, how, where, what type of fluids and cells can we get DNA from? Obviously in this activity, we're specifically talking about blood, but in the first uh, Spark of STEM video, I talk a little bit about how I explain the DNA comes from saliva and even boogers and, and things like that. So you can talk a little bit about that as well. Okay, the next step, after we now have our positive result, and that's really getting blue there, I just have to show you that it's continuing to get darker. Um, is I do a little bit of CSI magic, right? So um, it's very likely that you all are not gonna have a DNA lab where you can do all of the exact same steps that we do do in the forensic DNA lab. Um, but you can definitely still make this work even if you don't go through all the DNA analysis steps. So I still kind of walk students through, okay, now that we've done this and we know that we're possibly working with blood, here are the steps that follow. So you can obviously change this depending on the age range, right? So for like younger students, you may just wanna hop straight to what a DNA profile is and what it looks like in a very simple version of what a DNA profile could look like. If you have older students, you have high school students, you may, really may wanna get into the specifics. So now that we have this, we're then gonna go through all the different steps of forensic DNA analysis, which includes extraction, quantitation, 
amplification, separation, and detection, right? But what I normally do with my groups, because I'm normally doing this in just like a one or two hour kind of lesson, is they do the crime scene, they collect the DNA, we do the presumptive tests, and then I go straight to DNA profile. And I'll show you an example of a DNA profile here. Um, but what I do is I just have a small snippet of a profile. I'll have the victim at the top or the, or excuse me, I'll have the evidence profile at the top. And then I'll have some reference profiles that follow that, right? And so I just show a very small snippet. I talk about how DNA is unique to every individual except for identical twins. And then I tell them that we look at each of these peaks, right? So we have these different genetic locations. And at each genetic location, we inherit one peak from our mom and one peak from our dad. And so we're going to do that direct comparison between our evidence and our reference profiles, okay? And so then I give them the opportunity to look at these DNA profiles and tell me, who do you think this profile matches? So they compare the evidence profile with the reference profiles of the individuals involved in the case. And then we'll talk about what that means for, for that person going forward. And so that's really the sum of it. This activity is really fun. You can make it as easy or as difficult as you want. Um, you can go into a lot of detail if you really want to talk about all of the different steps that you can do to get to a forensic DNA profile. There are some uh, science companies online that do sell the full kit where you can do electrophoresis in your classroom. So it's really um, however, however challenging or simple as you wanna make it. So definitely go back to that first Spark of STEM video, check it out, see if you wanna do a mock crime scene in your own class, or if you'd rather just start with your own made up DNA evidence and take it from there. It's whatever you wanna do, it's just have fun with it. Uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Professor Kelly Knight. I'm a forensic DNA professor here at George Mason University. Thank you for coming to my laboratory. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll also provide you with some resources so that you can do this activity in your own classroom. Back to you, Maynard. Now that was absolutely incredible. I always love the opportunity for students to get hands-on and fully engaged with science, and this forensic lab does just that. Sometimes the thought of doing something as complex as forensics may seem a little daunting, but Professor Knight was able to show some really simple tips and tools that can turn any educator, whether you're in the classroom or at home, into a forensic science expert. I absolutely love it. I hope all of you learned something amazing today, and I want to say thank you for all of our educators that tuned in. If you happen to take some of these forensic lab ideas into your classroom, we would absolutely love to see them. Just tag us at our social handles here. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel below and follow us on social media to receive notifications for all new Coffee Break episodes in the future. If you want to see what else I'm up to as well, you can tag me at Hip Hop Science Show. And if you happen to miss an episode, don't worry, because you can find them all on demand anywhere at any time and access all the downloads and resources from this episode using the QR code. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. And though you may not be a detective on one of your favorite crime or mystery shows, you could absolutely be a detective in the classroom or at home with some of the incredible lessons you learned today, which can in turn empower your students to want to be forensic experts as well and possibly turn a simple hands-on lab activity into an unbelievable future career. Just don't get caught with your hands in the cookie jar. <laughs> we'll see you next time.